While shopping around in Glasgow city centre, I saw a glitter lamp in a shop window. And what was interesting is that it was colour changed. You can see this colour changing right now. But unlike the previous ones I've seen that use LEDs for illumination, and normally have a little magnetically coupled motorised agitator and it swirls the glitter around, it looks horrible. This one appeared to have proper convection flow of the actual liquid moving slowly with the glitter sort of moving in that uh, flow. And I bought one just to see what was inside. And here's what's inside. Well, do you want to see this going first? I'll show you it going first before I start taking things apart. So I'll just change the lighting for that right now. One moment, please. And you can see that the movement of the glitter is slow and it casts the beams out onto the table in quite a nice manner. It sweeps through colours, but it's not using the normal colour sequences of red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow and white. It misses out the white. And it does seem to have a little microcontroller doing that. OK, watch your eyes. The light is about to get bright. So let's take a closer look. So it starts off that it is a standard mm -hmm. glitter vial with the liquid, uh, which they actually tell you what's in it, which is nice. And the circuit board inside, let me zoom down this. Well, I, again, I don't need to zoom down because I'm about to take a picture of it and show you the circuitry. But it has a single colour changing LED here with a microcontroller. And then it's got a couple of resistors that are indeed very hot. Now, the power consumption of this on 5 volts is about 900 milliamps. I'll just zoom back out again. 900 milliamps, which suggests that uh, given that the value of the resistors here, we've got two 10 ohm resistors in parallel, which is uh, 5 ohms. That should theoretically pass one amp, but the wire is very thin, so it's dropping a little bit. And the temperature in there isn't too bad. Now, before I take that apart, let's talk about this. You see, and uh, this is where I should have had a note. One moment, I'm just going to grab something. Here we go. This is what I'm looking for. This was the instruction sheet. Now, I ended up buying two of these because I wanted to try and ship one back to over here. And uh, I was worried about it getting destroyed in the postal service. It turned out there was a way around that. And I brought it back in the cargo luggage with suitable pad padding. But uh, there were two instruction leaflets. One was the instructions for a lava lamp. But this one has the ingredients. Calcium nitrate, which is what I've suspected for a long time as they were using. So it's uh, water, a large quantity of calcium nitrate and glitter. Now, here's the science behind that. You see... You tend to think of plastic as being lighter than water and very easy to float on water because, well, you often see plastic floating in rivers and pools and in the sea, which isn't a great thing. But um, in reality, the only reason it's buoyant in the water is because it's uh, got air trapped in it. And in reality, most plastics are really, really heavy and the clear ones that are used to make glitter are so heavy that you need a super high specific gravity liquid to make them float. And I tried for ages. Domestic table salt does not work. Sugar doesn't work. Um, then I tried loads of other chemicals. Calcium chloride uh, kind of worked, but the end result, the one that got me the best results, was calcium nitrate. And it turns out that is what they use. And you have to dissolve a huge quantity. Now, it's very hard to get. If you go on eBay and you look for calcium nitrate, you will not find it. If you look for calcium nitrogen fertilizer, then you'll find it hidden as that because it's a popular fertilizer. It's got many other uses, but unfortunately, one of its uses is in making pyrotechnic compounds. And that's probably why it's kind of banned from eBay. However, there's ways around that. They just change the wording. Uh, and incidentally, it's rubbish as a pyro component because it's extremely hygroscopic. That's what makes it work so well in this. A huge quantity of that heavy salt will dissolve in water. And in this particular instance, they've got absolutely perfect neutral buoyancy. If you leave this for long enough and it takes a long time, the glitter will gradually settle up over the course of a day or two up to the top of the bottle, which is what you want. You don't want it sitting at the bottom. You want it at the top so that then the turbulence then brings it down into the liquid. It's a complex subject. Um, also, calcium nitrate is interesting. It's used in some uh, refrigeration systems where they've got the 
a separate loop where they've got the refrigeration plant and then they pump a glycol round. In this case, they can pump a saturated solution of calcium nitrate round and it's actually good for down to, well, as this bottle probably is, down to minus 30 degrees Celsius. That's pretty good. Anyway, I've digressed. Lot of science to this. Oh, also, it eats aluminium. So this glitter, if you use standard glitter, it won't necessarily work at all end up little clear flakes of plastic floating about but um if you can get coated glitters where they've got the clear plastic the metallization layer and then they've got a protective coating on top of that quite hard to get them okay let's now take a look at this i shall unplug it it's very hot i mean it's hot ish it's roughly about five watts the whole lot but it's still hot let's get a screwdriver and take these screws out Noting that uh, they've got a fairly big cord grip here, the cables just loosen it. I guess maybe this one has been originally designed to use a small tungsten lamp. This is part of the problem. This is why they're having to go to LED, is because, of course, the they're banning tungsten lamps. And the ones for special purposes are getting harder to find because uh, the manufacturers just can't, really justify making them anymore because of their their main market has been destroyed by the eco industry not there's anything wrong with led lights but they're not what they promised mumble 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 uh so it's a single-sided circuit board right tell you what oh it's got everything inside that you'd expect in a traditional glitter lamp with the lamp holder in their position not this one would be good for a lot of heat but uh, having said that with a low wattage lamp it would be okay right tell you what we know the script i shall uh desolder this take it out take a picture and explore it one moment please okay let's explore so the five volts comes in on this ground connection this zero volt negative whatever you want to call it connection and this positive connection and they go straight to the resistors there are two 5 watt resistors, 10 ohms each, in parallel, giving a total of 5 ohms, which will pass theoretically at 5 volts, 1 amp. But because of voltage drop across the cable, it's slightly lower than that. But the total dissipation of both resistors is 5 watt, but each resistor is rated for 5 watt, which means they're running at half power, which is good. The positive supply then goes via a weavy track, just for thermal separation to this diode. It's a standard diode and then that goes over to feed the rest of the circuitry with a decoupling capacitor, a microcontroller and the microcontroller then controls these standard NPN transistors via 4.7k base resistors. That then goes to these current limiting resistors, 22 ohm for blue and green and 33 ohm for red and then there's two LED positions. And the reason for these two links is just to swap over, just because it is a single sided board. The tracks are running under here, and it's just to swap uh, blue and uh, green and red, should I say, just because the way the tracks are laid out. Anything else worth note? Yes, there is. Because the circuit board's getting pretty hot under the resistors, there are separation tracks milled out. Uh, well, slots milled out between the resistors and the LED positions. They have only populated one LED position. The other one is empty. I wonder why they did that. Because it would have helped spread the dissipation. But having said that, with glitter lamps, it's often a more focused uh, effect from the glitter if you just have a single sharp point source of light underneath it. Um, anything else worth mentioning on here? Not really. Let's take a look at the schematic. This is quite an impressive unit, I have to say. Especially given that it is just running at 5 volts. It would have been nice if the heaters had been right up against the bottle. But they are just spaced from it and it is convected heat that goes up. I wonder how hot the LED gets in that. Anyway, here is the USB supply coming on and going straight to those resistors. There's the polarity protection diode, which is nice. The decoupling capacitor, the rest of the circuitry is so simple. Straight to the microcontroller, no major fluctuations. I mean, it's pulsing the LEDs, but it's a fairly stable supply. And we've got three identical sections of circuitry. A 4.7k resistor going to the classic Y1 transistor, and then the 22 ohms for the green and blue, 33 ohm for red, and then just a pair of LEDs, only one of which is populated 
there's not really much else to say. I think the most uh, interesting about this is the fact that they have got perfect equilibrium, the, the balance, the specific gravity of the liquid with the um, calcium nitrate is just perfect for this glitter. Um, and they must they must produce this in bulk, so I would guess they have big tanks and maybe they use a hydrometer, an accurate one, to get that because MDU has ever tried balancing glitter um, for the specific gravity. It's quite hard to do. Uh, you have to let it set for quite some time. Um, usually when you put the, the glitter in initially, you get tiny bubbles on it and they dissipate over time and that really affects, it makes it more buoyant. So when you think you've got it... Uh, sorted out it then over time sinks to the bottom of the bottle and then you have to add a bit more of the calcium nitrate uh, but it's worthy worthy worth doing i was going to say it's a worthy thing because it is quite fun making the glitter lamps um, I found one of the most resilient glitters is the holographic glitter it seems to have that coating i mentioned earlier on but there we have it uh, it was a surprise seeing one of these that is actually using thermal convection without a tungsten lamp. And uh, the result is very good. It works very well. So very interesting. Um, glad I saw those. Glad I bought one. Well, two. And uh, I'm quite tempted to make another circuit board with the same resistor arrangement, but maybe just a couple of high power LEDs. I was even toying with the idea of getting a little top hat shaped bit of metal and putting a high power LED in it and coupling the heat from that high power LED by gluing it directly onto the bottom of a bottle just to see if uh, how well it would. The liquid provides perfectly if there is direct physical contact with resistors because it's uh, basically liquid cooling. The convection takes the heat away from the source of the heat. Uh, very nice. Uh, quite a neat little unit. I like it.